As the Chernobyl nuclear plant was built fairly remote from civilization, a small town about 4 kilometers away from the plant was built to house workers and their families, Pripyat. The town of about 50,000 residents was a vibrant, new and exciting place to live. But this all changed in the early hours on April 26, 1986. At 1.23 am, during a routine test, a power surge triggered an emergency shutdown. Various safety procedures and systems would go on to be ignored or disabled completely. The nuclear fuel rods were eventually lowered into cooling waters, but it was too late. They were so hot that the water completely vaporized, causing an immense buildup of steam and heat, eventually blowing a 450 ton biological shield off the reactor, leaving its core completely exposed. Soon after, a second explosion blew the building completely apart, starting new numerous fires around the nuclear site. This almost clear cloud of smoke is actually incredibly radioactive particles being released into the atmosphere. The radioactive material being released was hundreds of times greater than the fallout over Hiroshima and Nagasaki, polluting about 80,000 square miles of land across Europe and spreading radioactive rain as far as Northwest Ireland. Despite how severe the incident was, no information was given to residents in Pripyat as a means of preventing panic. While residents were aware that there had been an accident, life went on as it always had, without any worry or concern as they had no idea just how bad it was. It went on to take 34 hours before the town of Pripyat was finally evacuated. They were told that they'd only be gone for two weeks and were given just two hours to evacuate, and as a result, many left most of their belongings behind. They would never return. In the wake of the accident, more than 300,000 people were evacuated from Pripyat and surrounding areas, and an 800 square mile exclusion zone was created around the reactor. Today, the town of Pripyat is left completely abandoned and is crumbling. Being that everything was left behind just as it was and has remained completely untouched since, Pripyat gives us an eerie look into a frozen-like world of those that lived there in the past. The Chernobyl disaster had an undeniable impact on the nature of surrounding areas. The blood forest, for instance, shows the result of thousands of trees that were exposed to radiation levels that were so high that they died, turning their leaves red, thus explaining the blood forest's name. Much of the original forestation was killed, but since the disaster, nature has taken back its territory in many ways and can be seen in the many eerie photos that you may have already seen. Despite the stories about nature thriving in the Chernobyl area, Professor Masso shows the other side. The first discovery that he and a fellow professor made was that birds located in the fallout zone of Chernobyl were suffering increased levels of genetic mutations. After examining 20,000 barn swallows, they found abnormal numbers of deformed beaks, malformed tails, irregularly shaped eyes, and tumors. Some birds were also found to have red plumage, where it should have been blue. We found that the abundance of many species of birds are depressed in these areas of high contamination, leading to an overall decrease in the biodiversity on the order of 50% you know, fewer species in hot areas than there should be uh, if, there had, if there wasn't radioactivity in the area. Insects have also seen many negative effects of radiation and as such are impacting the entire ecosystem. Thanks to the contamination of the food supply, bird species have declined by more than 50% in the high radiation areas. Maybe what is most troubling though is that it was found that only a fraction of the birds are reproducing and those that are laying eggs see only 5% of their eggs actually hatch. Of the few that do hatch, less than a third of the birds live long enough to become adults. The radiation and its effects are undeniable. On a farm in the Ukraine, this piglet was born suffering from severe deformity born with numerous extra limbs. Even with the numerous examples of how the extreme levels of radiation have impacted this region, the exclusion zones have allowed various wildlife species to flourish. Some believe the negative effects of disease and mutations may be less than the impact that humans would have had on the area's wildlife had Chernobyl never happened. A truly sobering thought. 
The explosion of Unit 4 left numerous large and highly radioactive graphite chunks thrown onto the roof of Unit 3 and nearby buildings. The mess very clearly needed to be removed. However, the levels of radiation were far too high for humans to do the work. While tractors were able to be used to clean much of the ground debris, the large graphite chunks of debris on top of buildings remained. As a solution, some of the world's most advanced technological robots from Germany, Japan, and Russia's space program were sent to aid in the cleanup. Incredibly though, even some of the most advanced robots in the world for the time were unable to operate in the extreme radioactive conditions. Numerous robots were completely destroyed. For the highest part of the buildings, this left only one option, people. People were to go into an environment so harsh that even robots had died. The levels of radiation were so extreme that the human body could only withstand as little as 40 to 60 seconds of exposure before threatening their lives. Yet, these men did it without question. Knowing that they had just a minute, they ran across the roofs pushing these heavy chunks of graphite over the edge as fast as possible before running back inside. According to a Soviet official at the time, only about 10% of the cleanup on the roof was done by machines. Instead, 5,000 incredibly brave men, known as the biorobots, did the rest. Immediately after, construction began to cover the core with the sarcophagus, where workers again were exposed to very high levels of radiation. By this time, many of the firemen and workers that had worked on cleaning up the mess were now having their exposure to radiation catch up with them. As a result, they suffered. Nausea, swelling, immense pain, and a slow, agonizing death was what these brave men were left with in their final days. Many who died are now buried in welded zinc coffins to prevent radioactive remains from contaminating the ground. During the absolute chaos and the immediate aftermath of the Chernobyl explosions, the exposed core not having anything in place to cool it grew so immensely hot that it began to melt. While this core slowly melted into a lava-like substance, no one knew at the time that as a result, deep within the dark basement of where the nuclear core had originally been, an elusive and incredibly dangerous monster was slowly emerging. The Elephant's Foot. Appropriately named for its elephant skin-like appearance, this unimaginably radioactive mass of nuclear fuel, melted concrete, sand, and core sealing materials was first found using sensors. The radiation levels read on these sensors were so high though that men were unable to approach this mysterious mass, instead having to use a camera on wheels that was pushed towards it. At the time, the radiation level of the elephant's foot measured an astonishing 10,000 rentgens per hour in 1980. At this level, within just 30 seconds, the human body would receive a dose of radiation so high you would experience dizziness, nausea, and fatigue even a week later. At a mere 4 minutes, it would cause certain death. Incredibly though, the elephant's foot still emits heat and intense levels of radiation even today. Though levels have weakened in 1996, a full 10 years after the meltdown, the elephant's foot was found to still be radiating at a high 1000 rentgens per hour. Even at this level, just a mere 8 minutes of exposure near the mass would cause radiation illness and an hour of exposure would prove to be fatal to the human body. The elephant's foot is still burning its way down and will remain in its dark basement for centuries to come. Truly a symbolic testament to the catastrophic aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster. Below what can be seen of the destroyed Unit 4 reactor that blew, lied a now flooded basement of water that had been used as coolant for the power plant. This posed a disastrous impending threat. While the initial fires from the explosion were quickly extinguished, they left a continuous smoldering flow of nuclear fuel burning slowly towards this pool of water. If this molten flow of metal should reach the water-filled basement, a second steam explosion would have been triggered, blowing the entire power station apart. In other words, the remaining three reactors would have exploded as well, causing an explosion ten times more powerful than Hiroshima. Essentially, half of Europe could have been wiped out, leaving it un inhabitable for up to 500,000 years. You may have heard a common tale of three men who volunteered to dive into a full pool of radioactive water to drain it in the face of almost certain death. 
The tale claims that all three men died within just days, sacrificing their own lives to save millions of others. While popular, the story isn't entirely true. Firefighters had worked tirelessly to drain the basement but were unable to completely drain it, leaving about 2-3 to three feet of water. This meant that the threat of the smoldering metal reaching the basement remained. However, three incredibly brave men, men who were neither soldiers nor firefighters, stepped up. With radioactive water up to their knees, the men made their way through complete darkness within the basement in search of drain valves. Soon after, men awaiting outside began to cheer and celebrate at the sound of rushing water being heard. They had successfully drained the pool, but contrary to the popular story, the three men, although exposed to heavy amounts of radiation, went on to live. One of the three men passed away in 2005 due to a heart attack, but it is believed that the other two remain alive even today. These men risked their lives going into a completely black, radioactive, water-filled basement beneath a molten reactor core that was burning its way towards them. They saved millions of lives, and their bravery is truly unquestionable.